Welcome back to The Connect Show. I told you we're finishing strong with a very special guest that has come all the way from the UK to spend time with us today. Welcome, Pastor Steve. Thank you. It's a real joy to be with you. It's really, I truly appreciate that you're kind of taking time out of your he, uh, time here to spend some time with us and tell us what's happening in, in your life and, and around the world as you well, minister. I, I feel the same. I feel honored that you'd allow me on your show. So Great. Thank you. So um, give us a little background because you have a very interesting story of American missionaries coming to your family. I'm from Wolverhampton. It's in England, right near Birmingham. And in 1974, uh, a couple of American missionaries who were in their 60s then, um, one of them knocked on my parents' door. It was an elderly lady. She knocked on the door, and an hour and a half later, after she'd shared about Jesus, who he is, what he can do for you, uh, both my parents committed their lives to Jesus Christ. So I had the privilege then to be raised in a Christian home. Wow. And so yeah. American missionaries. How, and just to hear that full circle and look at all that yeah. you now are Now I'm doing. back in America. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Wow. I, I have a saying, stories are in stories. Everybody's story is connected to other people's stories and they get to live on. So. Now, did your parents stay in touch with that family? Yep, they started the a church. And my parents were some of the first members of that church. Oh, okay. Yeah, Wonderful. so I grew up there and my parents were a part of that. Great. And now you yourself, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, I'm married to Esther, and I'm hoping they're watching online. Oh, okay. Uh, I think they are. Hi, Esther. <laughs> uh, and I have four children. Um, the youngest is Judah. He's eight years old. Uh, then the next boy is Joel. He's 10. Sophia is 13, and Bethany is 15. Oh, and there they are on the screen. Just yep. beautiful. So wow. that makes me feel homesick now. <laughs> oh, all right, don't look. <laughs> all right, and so you're quite busy. So you're a pastor, an author, a father, a husband. Yep. How do you balance all that? Um, I, I enjoy all of the things that I do, and uh, I think the priority I live with is my relationship with God first. I think if you get your priorities right, other things fall into place. So to know God, to walk with Him, and enjoy that relationship is my first priority. Then being married to Esther, I think it's the job of every husband to bring out the glory in his wife to make her look good and become everything she can be. And then thirdly, to parent my kids well so I set them up for a good life. And then fourthly, I get to serve God. And uh, I count that a huge privilege. So I often pinch myself because I feel like I get, I'm, I'm doing what I enjoy. And uh, yeah, so it isn't hard to manage all the things when you enjoy what, what you do. Isn't that the truth? When, when you're doing what God's called you to do, life is... Yeah, is, I'm in yeah. Florida. I went jet skiing yesterday. <laughs> wait, so. wait, your family might be jealous now because <laughs> yeah, they're having yeah. snow and probably cold yeah, it's weather. it's been very cold there. Now, when did you know that God, God had a call on your life? Um, I think from a very, very young age, seven years old, I had a stirring towards what I might say spiritual things, godly things. Um, I had a desire to want to know God and to walk with Him. I think that's inside everybody. Mm -hmm. And the way we listen and sort of tune into that and say yes to that can help us to walk with the Lord. But I was five years old when I committed my life to Jesus. Uh, seven, eight years old, I was listening to tapes that my dad used to have of other preachers. You know, and wow. 11 years old, had an encounter in a meeting where somebody prayed for me and I really felt the Lord very, very close and, and then filled with the Holy Spirit at sort of I was at eight years old, but at 13 I started to preach. So the whole journey, I'm trying to condense it down, but was extremely interactive with God. My desires and emotions were involved in that. Uh, my parents instilled some Christian disciplines into me, reading the Word, praying, and you know, being part of a Christian community. That was helpful. Sure. Um, so I, I feel like from when I've been very young, I've had a desire to do something great for God and still have that. Uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, but I feel like it's so little compared to what I'm destined to do. And I think that's the case for everybody if they would awaken to what God has for them. That's awesome. And so right now you pastor a church over in the UK. Tell us about that. And the church is called All Nations. All um, Nations. They can find that. All Nations Wolverhampton, All Nations Steve. You'll find it on uh, the internet. We're about 30 different nationalities. We run multiple services throughout a Sunday, um, some in English, some in Punjabi uh, for the Asian community, some in Mandarin. Uh, wow. For some of the Chinese community, we also run a service for those who have learning disabilities. Um, we we have a heart for mission, so we do a lot in Asia. Um, we're working with children over there. We've built a staff base. There'll be a Bible college soon, and 
uh, are going to Burma. So we, we, real heart for unreached peoples, but very, very local uh, in, a, in the way that we're established in Wolverhampton. Now, I know I've heard that the number of Christians in Europe has really diminished over the years, but what are you seeing? Uh, I'm excited for what God's about to do and that he is doing. I think there's two ways of looking at things. One is, oh, it could be better, it could be this. And, and I think there is a very realistic sense of secularism, humanism, and some people would say that the day for religion is over. And I think they're true if it's religion without dynamic mm. relationship. But I think if, we, if the church could really be the church, demonstrate the living power of God without all of our kind of frills, but just it's, it's authentic and it's real, I think people have never been hungry. If you look at the top 10 movies in Blockbuster or any other, most of them are supernatural. People are not afraid of the supernatural, but the church has been. And so or we've made it so religious that people don't know how to engage with it. So I actually think it's the best time in the darkness for the light to shine. That's awesome. Mm. And how long have you been at your church? I've been in the church since 91. And I became, I started as a youth worker. I've done other things. I've been on leadership teams. And in 2001, I became the senior lead. Uh, and how large a congregation? Uh, we're probably just under a thousand, approximately a thousand people. Okay. So All I feel right. like we haven't really intentionally tried to grow. I feel we're about to start to do that. We've been really focused on health. If the thing's healthy, it'll grow. I've never looked at my kids and said, you've got to grow, start growing. <laughs> if I look after them, if they're healthy, they grow. And I think healthy things grow. So a healthy church should grow. That's a great point. Mm. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about your latest book. Okay. And, and hear some other things of what God's doing in your life. All right, don't go away. We'll be right back with Pastor Steve. Welcome back to The Connect Show. We're talking with Pastor Steve Uppel from the United Kingdom. All right, Pastor Steve, so besides all the incredible things you do, you're also very fanatical about your health and exercise. Tell us about that. Uh, I do enjoy keeping healthy, keeping fit. I was 27 years old, uh, maybe, 20, maybe 25, and I'd preach for a friend Sunday night. I had one of those, it used to be the day when you wear double-breasted suits and tie. And I came off the stage, he walked up to me, and I thought he was going to say how much he enjoyed my message, and he said, you're really fat. And I was like, <gasps> wow. What a friend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, and he said to me, you're, you're not even 30, and you're really overweight, you need to do something about that. And it was the wake-up call I needed, and it started me on a trajectory of learning about health, learning about fitness. Uh, so I'm self-taught in it, but I went from around about 210 pounds to about 140 pounds now. Um, I exercise probably at least six times a week, normally start my morning with that, and try and eat as clean as I possibly can. So interestingly, listening to the doctor really about kidneys, yeah. part of me is thinking, well, I'm on no medication, I eat as lean and clean as I possibly can, it should set me up for a better old age. Well, in last week, we had Dr. Sal, one of our locals mm -hmm. doctor, who is just the encourager of eating okay. healthy and clean. And so I feel yeah. like, okay, God's telling yeah. me, Judy, it's time, it's time. So now you've authored three books. Tell us about your latest one, Burning Desire. Uh, it's called Burning Ones, but it is oh, about burning okay. desire for Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there it is on the screen. Absolutely. Okay. Um, it, 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 the strap line on the book is igniting and fueling a passion for Jesus Christ. I believe every heart was created to burn with fire, with passion, with desire for Jesus. It's inside of every human. We need to be able to do that. And yet, I know what it's like to be cold. I know what it's like to feel no hope. And yet, when I stay close to him, I know what it is to be bubbling with hope and excited. And the phrase of the book is really taken from Luke 24, where two disciples who Jesus walked on the road to Emmaus with them, he explained the scriptures. They didn't recognize who he was. His actions, they were kept from seeing who he was. Mm. But as they listened to him, later on they say to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he spoke to us along the way? Right. And I think every heart created to burn as we live in dynamic, everyday relationship with Jesus. And so I'm really keen to get people awakened to that rather than just, I attend church. It right. is always supposed to be a journey with Jesus. He speaks every day. And he's inside of us, and he wants to come out of us. So. Now, Pastor Steve, I love that, and I so agree. And that's one of my favorite scriptures and stories mm -hmm. of, of Jesus. Now, what do you do when you've been a Christian for a long time? Maybe you're really serving church, and, and sometimes you get so busy serving yeah, that you yeah, lose yeah. that burning desire. I, I, I parallel it to marriage. 
Uh, I've, we celebrate in about two weeks our 17th wedding anniversary. Oh, so congratulations. I'm really excited. But I know what it's like to be extremely intimate and can't wait to see each other. You spend a lot of time together. And then also what it's like where you feel like, especially when the kids were very young, you're yes. just ships passing in the night. Somebody's been awake at night. The kids are asking for food. And, and before you know it, because you haven't spent time together, not that you don't like each other, but it's just become a ritual rather than a dynamic relationship. And like any relationship, it needs time. It needs honesty. It needs sometimes just, hey, we need to stop. We need to engineer some space away from the kids and get alone with God. I think those things, so being brutally honest with God, pouring out your heart. I don't think it's about legalism. It's not about works, but it is about being honest and saying, God, this is how I feel. This is what I want you to do. Would you awaken my heart to you again? And I think he comes faster than we could ask. That's powerful. Yeah. And that's so needed. Now, what, what of your other books that you've written? The first one's called Rousing the Warriors. And it's about advancing the kingdom of God boldly across the nation. So rather than maintaining, it's about advancing. Okay. I think loads of people hold ground instead of taking ground. I think we're living in a time to take ground and advance the goodness of God's kingdom. The second book is called One Life, uh, Living It on Purpose, Making It Count. So it's not a dress rehearsal. How do I seize the opportunities of today and what God has for me? and walk in the fullness of what he's created me to do. And I try and help people to discover through doing a couple of things that I think are indisputable for everybody, leading them to their unique purpose in God. But they're all on Amazon, so people could have a look up there and they might be able to be a help to them. That's great. Now, as you come over to America, is there a difference you see in the church in America versus church in the UK? Um, I, I've been privileged to visit with some friends and like-minded people. Okay. Uh, but I have been to a few other churches on other trips. Um, I think, I guess when I pick up spirituality, Christianity is a lot more vocal, especially here in the state of Florida. It's not a foreign thing. It's quite, but sometimes, and maybe this is my perception, so I'm an outsider, forgive me if I've got it wrong. <laughs> sometimes it's something we do uh, as part of our culture, but it hasn't really penetrated into that dynamic daily relationship with God. We have a box we fit in. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can fit God in a box or a relationship with God in a box. He comes for a complete takeover. And Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. That's the gospel. And I think the American church may have a danger of making the Christian message palatable, clean, nice and acceptable because it's like we're very politically correct. But Jesus isn't always politically correct, but he is the most awesome God that anybody could ever know. So, That's powerful. I think there's a lot of truth in that. And I think, too, we get complacent. Mm. And so it, it just, our world is 24-7. We're going all the time. So it is hard to manage that. Yep. What's your daily practice of, uh, you wake up in the morning and spend time with the Lord, or what's? I do. Um, and I would rather call it a daily relational encounter with God. Okay. So the idea is to meet him. The idea is not to tick off a load of list stuff. Sure. But it's to say, God, and I'll normally go down into the kitchen or the living room, and I'll sit down, I'll have a cup of coffee, because I think there's going to be coffee in heaven. <laughs> have a cup of coffee, God. sit down, and I actually start by saying, God, I'm here to meet with you. I know you've been with me in my dreams. You're with me all the time. But I want to hear what you have to say as I read the word. May it come to life. Um, and may it be feeding me, giving me a revelation. And so I ask him to, and sometimes we all have this where you read a passage and it may not register, whether you're sleepy, you haven't got, you're just ticking boxes, but I'd go back and read it again and say, Lord, would you bring this to life? So praying, reading the word of God, but not out of legalism, but out of a real kind of, Lord, I'm here to meet with you. Out of a relationship. Yeah. Wow. Powerful. Well, I can't wait to read your book. I, it's burning Good. one, right? Yep. Okay, super. Well, Pastor Steve, thank you so much for coming on The Connect Show, and thank you for venturing over into your family. They're allowing you to travel yeah. and bring the thank message. Thank you very much for having me on your show. All right. You're